So to, to, clar to clarify before I start, I want to state that when I talk about a minimum wage, I'm talking about a government mandated minimum wage. I'm perfectly fine with if a privatized business wants to set a minimum wage for their business. It's fine by me. Okay, so to begin, some people fight for a higher minimum wage while some people fight for a lower minimum wage. But what if I told you that the minimum wage dramatically affects low skilled workers and teens in a negative way? Hi, I'm Isaiah Cheddar and that's exactly what I want to talk about today. And to begin, I will first talk about cherry picking sources and the general consensus of economic studies. Then I will talk about unemployment rates for countries with and without a government mandated uh, wage. And then I'll finish by talking about my third and final point, which is minimum, how the minimum wage affects teenagers like me. So first and foremost, we can all find sources that are advantageous to our own points of views, but we can barely well be cherry picking sources. In other words, picking the small minority of sources over the and therefore, I'm going to begin by citing a, a study done by the professor of economics at the University of California at Irvine, David Newmark. And the study was also done by William Wayshirt, Deputy Associate Director in the Division of Research and Statistics at the Board of Governors of the Federal Reserve System. Long title. And their study actually compiled 100 plus academic economic studies in which they summarized and gave an overview of each of the study's findings. And part of the con conclusion included this statement. Of the 102 entries in our summary tables, by our reckoning, nearly two-thirds give a relatively consistent, although by no means always statistically significant, indication of negative employment effects of minimum wage, while only eight gave a relatively consistent indication of positive in addition, we have highlighted in the tables 33 studies that we view as providing the most credible evidence. 25, in other words, 85%, or 28, which is 85%, of these points in negative employment effects. This study shows that most economic studies prove to show the economy is negatively affected by the minimum wage. But if anything, I hope that you find that I'm not cherry picking. And moving on, how do countries like America, government-mandated wage countries, fare against countries without a government-mandated wage? Well, according to data compiled by Steve H. Hank, professor of applied economics at the John Hopkins University at Baltimore, when comparing seven countries in the EU, European Union, without a minimum wage to the 21 countries with a minimum wage, overall, the countries with a minimum wage actually had an unemployment rate of 11.8%, whereas the seven countries without one only had an unemployment rate of 7.9%, which happens to be one third lower, which I'm sure you're thinking one very obvious thing, that's not very much, it's only 4% though. And well, that very statement is what leads me to my next point, and how does the minimum wage affect teenagers like me? Well. The simple answer is it very, very negatively affects us. Furthermore, how much has teenage unemployment rates changed since increases in federal minimum wage? Well, according to a study done by Mark Wilson, his credentials include former Deputy Assistant Secretary of the U.S. Department of Labor, current head of the Applied Economic Strategies, LLC, and has more than 25 years of experience researching labor force economic issues, and he actually found that the unemployment rates for teenagers in 2010, or the employment rates for teenagers in 2010, had actually fallen 40% since 1988, and within that time period, there were six increases in the government mandated wage. So you can't raise the minimum wage without expecting a rise in unemployment. So in conclusion, I've presented evidence favoring the removal of and I did so by first covering the idea of cherry picking and the general consensus among economists. Then I moved into my second point, which is unemployment rates for countries with and without one. And then my third point was how the minimum wage affects teenagers like me. 
So moving on, I don't expect you to change your opinion in a heartbeat because of my speech. I, I know that even though this speech could be the most moving, persuasive speech in the world, it's not going to sway some people's opinions. And for that, all I wish for you to get out of this speech is these three things. One, that you understand that the support for the minimum wage is not for everybody. The minimum wage doesn't only cause good people. It has negative results as well. But although within this speech, I showed you that the negatives outweigh the positives. And secondly, I hope that you learn that I don't want the riddance of the minimum wage because I don't care for low skilled and teenage workers. I care for them. That's why I'm here. And last but not least, I hope that this continues to fight the war of open-mindedness within society today. The split between the left and right is becoming increasingly large. Furthermore, the minds of the two is becoming less and less accepted. And it's that specific reason is why I want to bridge that gap and fight this war. Fight the war of the great divide. Thank you. Any questions? So the minimum wage in America currently at a federal level is set at seven dollars and fifty cents. If you had the ability to change it, what would you do? I would get rid of it. Put it all the way down to zero. All right. What do you do then for those people who are currently making a minimum wage job and they live in lower income families or well, the people just going into the job market at a lower wage rate? Well, the thing about it is because it's very flexible now is they're able, the employers are able to work harder and work for a higher minimum wage because they're starting lower. And not only that, but competition is what drives up the minimum wage. So I'm actually arguing within this speech that on average, um, employees will have a higher um, wage that they'll make hourly than if there was a minimum wage. Anyone else? How does minimum wage affect prices? Well, generally what happens is because because there's a huge increase in unemployment when it rises, there's less spending, so then there's less demand, so then prices get all whacked, and it's just not good for the economy. All right, is that all? Um, is there any concern that, do you have any concerns that companies would kind of get together and like decide that we're going to keep wages low to save money? Or do you think I, I think I think if that were to happen, I think the government should step in and stop something like that. So, in the speech, you address the economics of the situation. What is the morality of this? How is that? Is it a moral concept? Well, the people who support a minimum wage, they don't do it because they hate them. They they want to help them. So, in essence, it, it's for a good purpose. But actually, what ends up happening? is the low-skilled workers, which is what the minimum wage is for, end up getting fired. So in a way, it's not good, and it's, and in my opinion, it's not, it's not of my morals to force someone to pay that person a certain amount, especially if they're actually willing to work for a lower amount. Thank you.